And that is how I came to own a cottage core strawberry shortcake dress. Hello everybody, June here. Welcome back to another video. And if I look like a marshmallow to you, it's because I feel like a marshmallow. In today's video, I'm going to share with you this crazy, crazy dress that is McCall's 7969. And before I tell you about the dress, let me tell you about what led me here. About a month or so ago, I got it in my head that I wanted to make a color block dress that was pink on the top and red at the bottom. You can barely see here, but I will definitely post a clip of me in the dress. But anyhow, I wanted to make this color block dress, but I also wanted to make a nap dress. And if you haven't heard, that is a kind of dress that you are as comfortable in taking a nap as you would be going outside. But then I started seeing all these people posting about their McCall 7969 and I knew that those would be the two things that I would put together. So the, the pink and red dress with McCall 7969. Now the problem, well not so much a problem, but the thing is that that pattern is drafted for a flowy fabric and I have used poplin here and as you can see, it shows. I wanted a big fluffy dress. I didn't want a drapey dress. And so here we are. It took a long time to find fabric that matched, that was, well, not matched, but that was the same fabric in just different colors. And then I finally found it and I had to make it. So I ordered the fabric, the fabric got here, and it was great. It's a poplin, uh, it's a um, polyester cotton blend poplin, but I, got the fabric, washed it, and I got to work because I really wanted this dress. So I started with the pattern. The only copy of the pattern that I could find had the large, um, extra large and extra, extra large sizes in it. I couldn't find the other one, but even the large was according to the pattern, pattern measurements too small for me. So there's a lot of reason this in this pattern. I started out with the size large and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to pull it over my bust. So I added um, a little bit of the sides from the size large to about halfway between the large and the extra large. And then of course I had to do the same for the sleeve front. So that started that uh, and I knew, I knew that it would be big, but I wanted big is what I was after. I made the bodice and there was just no way that you can truly muscle in this. Like you just have to go all out because you can't really test the fit until you've added this binding here. And this binding here is added half by hand. And so rather than spend all that time making a muslin, I just, I just jumped right in and, and I thought that I would make the best of what I had um, and sort of make it up as I go along. So that's what I did. I made the bodice, I tried it on, and there was quite a bit of gapping um, or gaping on the V. And it wasn't big, it was just a little long. So to solve that, I trimmed the corners. I will put a clip here of the, uh, of the pattern piece to show you what I did, but I basically clipped the corners. So I extended the, the tips down a little more so that they were at a bigger angle, at a sharper angle. That way it stretched out this bit here, taking care of the, of a gaping neckline. But it is so indecent. Well, for me anyway, I didn't like how low the V was. And quite frankly, everything about this dress is so outside of my comfort zone that it's not even funny. But the V was particularly deep. So after I had completed the whole dress, I went ahead and I tacked it here. And so uh, that's where my V ends. But I finished the bodice and I started working on the skirt. And there is so much fabric on this skirt. It's kind of nuts. But what I did to the skirt, because of the way that I wanted it to look, uh, I wanted a ruffle, but I didn't want the thin ruffle that came with the pattern. So I 
basically shorten the bigger part of the skirt so the first part that gets attached to the bodice I shortened that the, the length of one of the ruffles and then I cut the bottom ruffles twice as tall as the pattern has you cut it so then my upper skirt is shorter but my ruffle is longer and I think it looks great so the pattern is easy there's a, there's a lot of ease like I think I could probably have gotten away with not making that adjustment on the sides and maybe even with the medium if I could find it uh, there's a lot of ease a lot of ease as you can see and so yeah that's how this dress came to be and the thing is that it is extra it is wild it is fluffy <laughs> um fluffy to the point that i i love it i love the look of it i love the idea of it but i'm not entirely sure how i'm gonna feel once i wear it out because whew, it's a lot of fabric and that is how i came to own a a uh, cottage core strawberry shortcake dress and the thing is that what I envisioned is what I got but what I got was more than I bargained for because I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of product I want to do a very quick um, turn here so that you can see it but uh, there is a lot of fabric in this thing But what really drew me to the dress in the first place was the sleeves and the sleeves was the thing that I knew I wanted. These are big. Um, I did shorten them about two inches because they were very long, but they are enormous. There is fabric to swaddle a newborn in each one of these sleeves. But I think that it, it's not big on me, it's just oversized, but it looks better <laughs> than the dress that I transformed in another video that I will link below. That that dress was actually big, big, not just oversized, but big. But this dress just makes me feel like a big fluffy marshmallow peep on Easter and it's extra as I said it is wild and I want to love it I really do want to love it let me know what you think in the comments thank you so much for watching I will see you next time bye